Welcome to part 3 about different effect handlers in Jetpack Compose. In this part we will have a closer look at Remember Curatine Scope and Remember Update State. And first I want to start with Remember Curatine Scope. If we have a look at our launched effect, which we discussed in uh, the first video of the series, then we can see that this launched effect provides a curatine scope. So this starts a curatine. And the true key here, key here says that the launch effect only gets executed if the composition was successful after entering the composition of our composable function. But now we could have something like this. So we have a button with an on-click method. And in this on-click method, we also want to start a curatine. And if we copy and paste this launched, uh, launched effect in here, then we get an error because the launched effect is a composable and can only be invoked or defined inside another composable. So we can do this here because in this onClick method of this button, we don't have a composable scope. And now to achieve this, to launch a curatine inside an onClick of a button, we can use remember curatine scope. So we can say remember curatine scope and uh, apply it for this variable here. And inside our button, we can then say scope.launch and launch a curatine. So this remember curatine function is a composable, so we can define it inside our composable function. But the scope, now if we have a closer look, is just a curatine scope. So we can launch a curatine inside our onClick method. And the interesting thing now is that this scope is scoped to the lifecycle of this composable function where it's defined into. So this curatine here, if it's a long running task or something like this, is scoped to the life cycle to the composable. If the composable leaves the composition, then this curatine will be cancelled. And this is also especially useful when you want to have full control over the curatine. So this curatine here can be also cancelled manually because we can access this scope value everywhere in our composable. So we could have a button with an onclick method here. And in this onclick method, we could simply say scope.cancel. And then we would cancel the launched curatine here if this is a long running task. Maybe you will start uh, some kind of heavy animation here. And if the user clicks on uh, a button and triggers another event, then you could just cancel this animation with this scope.cancel function. So when you should actually use this remember curatine scope? You should use it or you need to use it if you want to start or launch a curatine inside a composable function, but you don't have a composable scope like we had here in this uh, button on click method. There we need something like remember curatine scope when we want to launch a curatine. And we can also use it to have full control over the curatine. And we can simply say scope.cancel if we want to cancel the curatine. Of course, we could uh, do something like this if conditioner and wrap this around our launched effect and the curatine inside this launched effect will be cancelled if this condition is false because our launched effect leaves the composition. But I think this scope.cancel like we have in the, on the button down below um, is a more convenient method here. All right, okay, let's have a closer look at remember update state. I've created this little example, which I will go through. This example has some print statements and demonstrates really well what's the difference between using remember update state and don't using it and why it actually should be used. Let's inspect this example composable function. This composable function gets a changeable function, which we then pass to remember updated state effect handler and get the current changeable function, which we can then invoke down here in our launched effect. For the launched effect, we pass true for the key. So the launched effect only gets triggered if the first composition after entering the composition was successful. But you might ask yourself now, well, we have a changeable function here. We always want to launch this effect when the changeable function actually changed. So we could pass the um, changeable function as the key. So the launch effect would trigger if this changeable function actually changed. And then we could uh, comment this out and invoke this changeable function in here. So this would also work for 
Of course, this would also work and would always invoke this changeable function, the current one, so the latest one, the latest updated one. But the problem now is with this delay. We can assume that this is a long running heavy task. And now if this changeable function would change, then the launched effect always gets triggered again. And this long running heavy task will always be executed again and after that the changeable function would be executed and to avoid this now to make only to execute this delay only once we can use this remember updated state so we can um, remove this remove this and uncomment this and then we can pass true for the key again and now this launched effect only gets triggered once so the delay the long running task only gets executed once but the changeable function here can still change and this remember updated state makes sure that this current changeable function is always up to date after this delay or after this delay finished after the long running task finished and then we can invoke the current changeable function after our long running task and in the meantime in of this three seconds here this current changeable function could change like five or ten times and we would then execute the latest one the most updated one so to demonstrate you that this is not just nonsense what i'm talking about i've created this little example which shows really well what's currently going on and how this remember updated state works so we have a uh, mutable state var here, composition counter, and also another variable example counter. Then we have a box with uh, content alignment center, fill max size, just some example UI stuff here. And then we have this column here. And in this column we have a button which increases the composition counter. This counter is just there to um, force recompositions. This counter is, isn't used anywhere. It just forces a recomposition of this block here by increasing it and then we have the example counter the ex example counter gets always initialized with some random value and then we can print this counter and we can print this counter with this print statement and show what's the current value and then we can also print compositional so that we know that this uh, will be uh, entering the compositional or recomposes or something like this and in this changeable function now, we can then print our example counter. And if we click this button here two times or three times, then this example counter value will be updated three times. And we should only see the latest one in this changeable function. But this print line statement should always show us the different example counters uh, which we initialized here. And so we can verify that this changeable function always prints the latest one. Um, but let me quickly show you this. And I think we should write this composition counter down here, even though it does not do anything, but it forces the recomposition of this uh, composable. And then we can start this and have a look at the log cat. Right now, the counter only gets printed once the composition um, uh, happens and then the example count counter from our changeable function gets uh, printed this is okay so far because i didn't uh, press the button and didn't force a new random generated number and a new recomposition if i clear the log cat and then start the app again and then i press one time on the button then you can see the recomposition occurred with a new number and the example counter print statement which comes from our changeable function here has the updated one even though this launched effect just got triggered once this current changeable function is always up to date we can also verify this with another print line statement so that you can really see that this launched effect just gets executed or triggered once so triggered launched effect and then we can clear the log cat and start this again. And then I will increase the counter and you can see, yes, you can see um, uh, the initial the initial composition with the initial value, then the launch effect is triggered and then I've increased the counter to another number and then we have a recomposition, but the launch effect does not get triggered again. 
And nevertheless, the example counter is, has the latest value. So this current changeable function is always up to date, even though this launch effect does not get triggered again. And this is because our remember updated state effect handler. So when you should actually use this remember updated state effect handler, if you have a changeable function or a changeable variable, it does not have to be a function like in our example, it can also be a changeable variable. And you have some long running initial task which only needs to be executed once. Then you should use the remember updated state instead of passing the changeable variable or the changeable function as the key for a launched effect so that the long running task gets always executed again. If this is just an initial task which needs to be executed once and the other things in this launched effect can change like a function or a variable, then you should use remember updated state for this changeable things that you make sure that this initial task really gets only triggered once. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about these two cool effect handlers in Jetpack Compose. In the next video, and this will also be the last video, I will show you the snapshot flow, produce state, and derived state of effect handlers. And yeah, see us there.